Mr Speaker, I am a fighter and not a quitter. I came into office at a time of great economic and international instability. Families and businesses were worried about how to pay their bills. Putin's illegal war in Ukraine threatens the security of our whole continent. And our country has been held back for too long by low economic growth. I was elected by the Conservative Party with a mandate to change this. We delivered on energy bills and on cutting national insurance. And we set out a vision for a low tax, high growth economy that would take advantage of the freedoms of Brexit. I recognise, though, given the situation, I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. I have therefore spoken to His Majesty the King to notify him that I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. Will you lead the Conservatives into the next general election? I will lead the Conservatives into the next general election. Definitely. Well, look, yeah. I'm not going to tell you what to do or what to think or how to live your life. I'm not interested in how many two-for-one offers you buy at the supermarket or how you spend your spare time or in virtue signalling. And I also want to thank our outgoing leader, my friend, Boris Johnson. <laughs> Boris, you got Brexit done. You crushed Jeremy Corbyn. You rolled out the vaccine and you stood up to Vladimir Putin. You were admired from Kiev to Carlisle. And the Conservative Party will always be the party of low taxes. Yeah. Liz Truss, good morning, Prime Minister. Good morning. Good How morning. are you? How are you doing? Have you slept well? I, I have, thank you very much. Good. And it's great to be here on Radio Radio Leeds. I am really glad that you are here as well, because since Friday, since your Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng's mini-budget, the pound has dropped to a record low. The IMF has said that you should re-evaluate your policies. And the Bank of England has had to spend £65 billion to prop up the markets because of what they describe as a material risk. Where have you been? Uh... Harry Cole. Thank you, Prime Minister Harry Cole from The Sun. You were the one that wanted to cut the 45p rate. You stood on a platform to win the leadership of the Conservative Party on a platform to cut corporation tax. You and the Chancellor, the ex-Chancellor, designed this budget together, in lockstep, we're told, at times in secret, the two of you. He has to go because of the fallout from it. How come you get to stay? Well, my priority is making sure we deliver the economic stability that our country needs. That's why I had to take the difficult decisions I've taken today. The mission remains the same. We do need to raise our country's economic growth levels. We do need to deliver for people across the country. We're committed to delivering on the energy price guarantee, which people are already seeing in their bills. But ultimately, we also need to make sure that we have economic stability and I have to act in the national interest as Prime Minister. Um. And that's why I promised on entering Downing Street to act.
15 days then, you announced £45 billion of tax cuts without setting a fiscal framework. It precipitated a £65 billion emergency bond buy-in programme by the Bank of England to protect pension funds. The pound tanked. A thousand mortgage deals withdrawn from the markets as interest rate, rate, rates expectations spiked. You established a 33-point lead for Labour in the polls. And now the lady not for turning has announced a massive U-turn on a policy. This is surely the worst start of any Prime Minister. Well, let's remember what we were facing four weeks ago. But do you accept we were that it's facing, been a bad start? We were facing families having energy bills of up to £6,000. We were facing inflation that could have been 5% higher as a result of those energy prices. And we were facing a global economic slowdown. And what we have done as a government is acted decisively. We've acted to put in place the energy price guarantee, which has already come in. Uh, it means that families, typical family, won't be paying more than okay. around £2,500. Okay. Prime Minister, my question... And, and we've, and we've covered we've a lot also... of this on Sky News. My question was, do you accept you've had a rocky start? How many people voted for your plan? What do you mean by that? Sorry. Well, you've set out a significant change of direction mm -hmm. from the Conservative government that you were being part of for many, many years. But how many people voted for you to do that? Well, people in 2019 who voted Conservative voted for a successful country where we are levelling up all parts of the country and where we're driving growth, enterprise and opportunity. Now, any government has to deal with the circumstances it faces. And we face this situation of, you know, which was unforeseen, huge energy costs, rising inflation due to the war in Ukraine and the aftermath but you, of COVID. But you know, but you know very we are well, Prime Minister, that the, the, a small number of people in the Conservative Party, tens of thousands rather than the whole country, voted for you in the leadership contest, perfectly legitimately. But do you fear that you have put the country on a path that it didn't ask for because you believe very strongly that it will lead to growth? Keir Starmer wants to put extra taxes on the companies we need to invest in our energy security. And his sticking plaster solution will only last six months. He has no long-term plan and no vision for Britain. Mark Drakeford in Wales is cancelling road building projects and refusing to build the M4 relief road. Nicola Sturgeon won't build new nuclear power stations to solve the energy crisis in Scotland. Have these people ever seen a tax rise they don't like? <laughs> or, or an industry they don't want to control? They don't understand the British people. They don't understand aspiration. They are prepared to leave our towns and cities facing decline. <laughs> it's pro-business and pro-growth. Leaving the EU gives us the chance to do things differently. And we need more of that. That's why over the coming weeks, my team of ministers will set out more about what we're going to do to get Britain moving. We'll make it easier to build homes, to afford childcare and to get super fast broadband. We'll help you set up your own business and get a mobile phone signal wherever you are in the country. <laughs> this morning I met the chairman of the 1922 committee, Sir Graham Brady. We've agreed that there will be a leadership election to be completed within the next week. This will ensure that we remain on a path to deliver our fiscal plans and maintain our country's economic stability and national security. I will remain as Prime Minister until a successor has been chosen. Thank you.